Hi, this is Trish and Molly, and we are going to be doing the fun and done with the batting buddy today. And it's a fun little quilt. Now, the great thing about this, you can do this with or without the batting buddy. And I'm going to show you how to do it with both. It makes it a little easier with this, but I've got the measurements out so you don't have to have this. This is Molly. She's going to help us today. I'm going to put her down when I start sewing. And this is what we're doing. Now, the great thing about this quilt, you can make it any size. This is what I've got done so far. And we're going to be adding to it. Uh, I don't know what the name of the pattern is. I just kind of did what I wanted. I used two and a half strips and some five inch squares. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna do is cut these nine and a half inch squares for your backing. I use this gray, this dark gray, and the fabric that I used, I got last month from my, uh, so, uh, my sewing box, uh, from the fat quarter box, I got the uh, fabric. They were already cut up in two and a half inch squares. I had already pieced them together in pieces of three, just because I was going to do something different with those, but I changed my mind. So what you're gonna do is cut nine and a half inch squares. Now you can use this as a template, or you can just cut a nine and a half inch square. And that's your backing. Make sure you get coordinating thread for your backing for your bobbins. Then the second you're gonna have your top thread. Now I did 24 squares from this. You can do anything you want to make it as big or small as you want. I just happen to have just enough of the two inch strips to do a 24 inch uh, wall hanging. Now you can see that I've already got them sewn into threes, but you'll be sewing them on one by one. The next, you're gonna cut this batting. And those are seven and a half, double check my measurement, seven and a half inch squares. Now you can use this again, or you can just cut a seven and a half inch square. Okay? Mm hmm And what I do is I put on the batting buddy. And it, like I said, if you don't have it, all you need to do is go in an inch each way and make a rectangle. As long as you can use permanent ink or you can use a heat solvent pen uh, it it uh, you can use a regular ink if you've got a dark backing then you're going to put your batting on now one thing i already did with all my backing my batting is i made a mark so what you're going to do if you're using a two and a half wide square well then i've got to get my uh, Now, if it's two and a half inch wide, you're going to do half of that, which is one and a quarter. And I already put this little tape on here, so I can just do it. So what you're going to do is at one and a quarter, you're going to put it at angle and an angle, and then you're going to make a mark on your batting. Again, you can use this water soluble pen. I did a regular pen just because it marks easier, and I knew I wouldn't be able to see the fabric through that. So you just make a mark there. Then you're going to put that in your batting body or your rectangle that you drew. Next, what you're going to do is you're going to lay two pieces of fabric right there on the line with the edges, one right side up and one right side down. And then we're going to go over and sew this all together. Oops, and I forgot I need to pin these just to hold them down. Okay, we're going to go over and sew these. Now, one thing that's important when you're sewing these 
you're going to want to make sure you don't go over the batting. So make sure you do it right where the batting starts. The quarter inch seam. So this down in an angle. And again, stop before the end of the batting. Now, if you do make the mistake and you go over it, you just take your seam ripper and you cut that out. Okay, there's one. You're gonna flip that over and then you're gonna do the other side. Now this one, you don't have to make a mark because you've already got one in place here. Again, start at the edge of the batting, your quarter inch foot, Okay, great. Next, we're gonna go over here. I'm gonna iron down a little bit. Now, because I already had these done, they're kind of crisp, but you know, it's better to just give it a nice little crispness down. Looks very nice. Now, I mean, if you really want, you can add more two and a half inch strips, but what I did is I made these five inch squares. And I alternated between the gray and the white, and then I cut them at an angle in half. So then add them right about here, so you make sure when they're going to flip, we're going to cover that corner very nicely. Now don't worry about the excess fabric yet. I'm going to show you what we're going to do with that. Now I cut these strips, I fussy cut them at about 11 inches long. Um, oh, and I noticed that I'm a little short over here. Okay, well I'll have to make just put another square there. So again. down. All right, beautiful. Now this is how you're going to get rid of the extra. You're going to flip it over. You're going to pull back your back fat thread. You're going to take your ruler. And I have one with this lip on it. I Actually, I don't know where I got it, but it's amazing. I'm going to kind of edge it up there so you don't cut that back. And I have done that a few times. And I've just had to wing it. I've put those at the bottom and gave them a whole new backing. Cut that off. Nice and crisp. Again, pull this back as far as you can. Put that edge up against there so you don't cut that. I think I need a new blade. There we go. And normally, if you have a good rotator blade, you're only going to have to cut once, but I also have a ripped rotator cuff. So I've had to put a little extra effort into my cutting knife.
Okay, so when it comes out, it's going to look like this, nice and beautiful. Now what you do, you're going to take four pieces and you're going to make a diamond. Let me get my bottom pieces. That's what it's going to look like when you're done. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sew these pieces together. Now, the thing that's going to be important is I'm going to sew right over here because I'm going to pull this batting over. So get it as close to that as I can. And then again, I'm going to sew them into groups of four. Now the threads on the back, I'm going to be cutting when... I'm going to make sure I have these all lined up. I already pre-sewed some of these bindings because I wanted to get this much done before I demonstrated this. Molly's having a good old time barking at us. She likes to be held all the time. Crossing over. A little past the lining. Okay. Now what I do when I have that loose thread right across that thing is I just clip those. Okay, and come back over here. Now this is where we're going to do our binding. Now normally I'm not a person who uses starch, but I have learned to love it all of a sudden. These bindings are a little bit small. So what you're going to do in every corner, oh, I've got one piece where I sewed over. I'm going to take my seam ripper. And I can't quite... There we go. A little tug. There we go. Okay. You're going to do every square you're going to fold it in half up to the line like this and this is where the starch comes in you don't have to use starch but all of a sudden it's my new best friend I'm gonna take your hot iron now i have a big rowenta but i love this little one by steam fast i got it at a quilt show for 25 dollars Pretty sure they have a, that a lot of quilt shops on Amazon. It's very light, it gets very hot. It's a really good one. Iron that down so it's nice and crisp. Just a corner. There you go. And you're gonna do that on all four sides. Now, when I'm doing two sides like this, I don't pin it yet because. What I'm going to do, I'll show you what I'm going to do. Yeah. That 
one didn't fold over. It's a little harder to work it because it's kind of a small binding, but. And I have tremors and arthritis in my hands too, so I have a little bit of trouble with this, but. Okay, let me iron them down. Look how beautiful and crisp they are. And take your pins and pin them down. So you go around and you do all four sides like that. You're going to get a nice, crisp little binding. And then loose thread. And then you either hand stitch them down or machine stitch them down any way you want. Then you add them on. And I'm going to have a 6 by 4 quilt. What I used was a half of a jelly roll. And a quarter yard of white and gray that I made five inch squares out of. And this makes uh, a nice wall quilt. And uh, that's my demonstration. If you have any questions or you want to see any more rulers demonstrated, uh, just let me know. And me and Molly would love to hear from you. Bye-bye.